couple of months ago, I decided to try loading 35 millimeter film into a 120 camera using these little adapters which go in the can so it'll fit in a 120 slot. And it kind of worked. I ended up with 12 panoramic images shot on 35 millimeter film. The only problem was I could only get 12 images because that's all my camera that I was using, which was the Bronica SQA, would fit on a roll in a 120 back. But there were other problems because on the Bronica, the film travels vertically through the camera. So I had to turn the camera sideways to try and shoot it. And it was just an absolute nightmare and a hassle trying to frame something sideways through a viewfinder. It doesn't really work from a usability point of view, but from a feasibility point of view, it worked fine. Today, I'm going to set out to figure out, can I actually do this? And to make sure I do it right, the film I have chosen is Ektachrome E100. So I'm gonna shoot panoramic slide film. Now this is a roll of Ektachrome that the first quarter of the frame of the film was destroyed by accident uh, from me attempting to do this and failing because I didn't cop some things. But we'll see if we can get maybe 10 or 12 shots on the last of the roll. To do this, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need our adapters. We're going to need the Ektachrome film. We're gonna need some backing paper from a 120 roll of film. If you develop your own film, you'll end up with mountains of this stuff anyway. We're going to need, not the wasted film, some tape, scissors, pen, ruler for cutting the backing paper into the right shape. But we're also gonna need a camera to put it in. And the camera we've picked, or I've picked, is the Mamiya RB67, a beautiful monster that is beautifully big. You know, it's a big, beautiful camera. Okay. The reason I picked this camera is because it has some quirks with the back. So this is a fully manual camera. And if you know how the back of this operates, first off, it goes horizontally, but you can also rotate it to go vertically, uh, the rotating back. So that's very useful for shooting panoramas. It means we can shoot them horizontally and we don't have to deal with rotating it on an L bracket and doing all this other nonsense. The 6x7 frame is also wider. However, the main advantage of this camera is that we can wind the film independently of the shutter. We can wind the film and we don't have to use the frame counter. The frame counter is irrelevant anyway. But if we flip this switch forward and reveal a little red dot, that's multi-exposure mode, which means we can wind the film and the camera will shoot without a back, essentially. So if we take this arc slide out, so if we take the back off the camera, it should just shoot without any film inside it. So we can take our film, load it in weirdly, wind, shoot, and so long as the multi-exposure is on, the, the camera will shoot regardless of what the film back is doing. So that will enable us to shoot panoramas. And in order to prepare this, what we need to do is we need to cut a length of backing paper off so we don't waste uh, film winding up backing paper on this. Uh, what we want to do, ideally, to have our can sitting here, like so, feeding film around the back, but we don't want to feed any film until it's in the camera and we've wound on a frame. So we need a couple of frames, we'll say three frames worth of backing paper attached to the front of the film in order to manage that. So three frames, six by seven, so it's seven centimeters. So we need three sevens worth of backing paper. So we're just gonna cut off our backing paper so it's not curling up and annoying us. And we have plenty of backing paper anyway in case we make a mistake. Now we need to figure out where to attach the actual film to so we can tape it up. Draw the lines. Okay, so this area here is where our film will be taped to. Let's take our film, line it up with the two lines, just to make sure it's roughly square, and then just tape down the film. So now we just need to get our adapters, pop them into the can, on the end of the can, get our film back. Okay, so it's loaded. There's a lot of play in this adapter. This camera doesn't seem to like them very much. Take up the slack. Okay, that's ready to go. So all I need to do is wind this once fully and then I'm ready to shoot. Okay, so now we need to put this on the camera. But we're not quite ready yet. We need one last thing. So when you shoot the film like this, the film can kind of bulge over the back a little bit. Now this isn't normally a problem because in the back of the camera, there are guides that the film runs through that pushes it down. That's not going to work in this case. So what I've done is I've prepared 
uh, this, which is a piece of vinyl. Uh, piece of vinyl, and if I'm gonna put this here, it's gonna make a frame mask, but more importantly, I won't let the film bulge as easily. So load that in there. Lock it in. And now we're more or less good to shoot. So it's gonna be wind once. And now our film's ready to be exposed. So we're just gonna lock our shutter so we don't accidentally press anything. Lock the shutter. And now we just need to take this out and shoot some panoramas. To see if this idea would work at all, I went out to Malahide and took some shots along the coast. One thing I did run into was the framing. I just sort of had to guess in the viewfinder and hope it turned out okay. In order to scan the shots, I just used my standard method of using the A7 III and the Lomography Digital Lisa scanning mask. Was it worth the hassle of making that frame mask, loading it into the camera, getting the adapters and shooting the panoramic 35mm pictures? I would say yes. They turned out really good. I'd give it a 9 out of 10. They're nice, they're clear, they're quite sharp, and they look great on the film. You know, I examined them on the light table and they looked amazing. And I think it's super, super, super cool. The only problem is I've actually sold the Mamiya RB67 because it was just too heavy and too awkward to use. But I do have my Bronica SQA. And what's interesting about this camera is, is that you can buy a 35 millimeter wide back or a panoramic format back. And it will actually run the film horizontally for you through the camera. The only problem is these backs are around 400 ish euro, which is a lot. Uh, you can almost get a camera for that and it's multiple lenses worth but I think it might actually be worth it for the fun and the enjoyment of shooting this. I am traveling to Japan in around four weeks time. I really hope I can pick up one of these backs for a more reasonable sum but we'll see. I might just end up having to buy one on eBay. But as for the idea of shooting panoramic 35mm film, I think it's awesome. Uh, 9 out of 10 would do again if I had the camera. So that's it for this little experiment guys and I'll see you next time.